Hey everybody, um, I just wanted to do a, a real quick video. Um, a bunch of people have had a, a ton of questions on the software side of things for the, the new digital uh, dash cluster. So I just wanted to go through like just a really quick um, kind of show you how it works uh, a tutorial on, on setting up a gauge. Um, and it's going to be, you know, the goal is that it will be completely um, open-ended so that, uh, you know, you can make really cool, um, unique gauge faces uh, as you wish. Um, so I've already done one here on the, on the uh, speedometer screen. So <clears throat> what we'll do is just kind of match that on the um, tachometer screen here. And um, so we'll go ahead and double click and it is a round screen. So the um, menu is a little bit cut off, but um, I know uh, where everything is. And, um, you know, technically you could uh, plug the output into a, um, uh, a different screen if you wanted to, to, to program it up. Uh, but anyway, so what we're gonna do is just kinda, is just add a round gauge right here in the middle. And so what that's gonna do is populate, um, I have it uh, set up here to um, populate an RPM gauge. And so what we'll do is uh, double click on the gauge itself and we can test sweep it um, and we can change properties as well. So um, what I'll do is I'll go to the size and the ring. So right now we need to make it bigger. So I'm just kind of holding down the mouse on the plus uh, button to, to scale the, the gauge up to uh, fit the screen. And I know that uh, about 860 uh, pixels wide is, is uh, roughly where I want to be. So we're going to scale that up. And then position it um, right in the center of the uh, of the gauge here, right in the center of the screen. And yeah, that looks uh, that looks about right. So <clears throat> we've got a couple different options on the screen. We can uh, um, turn off the outer ring, which I like to do on these. Um, so we'll turn off the outer ring on this one, make it a little bit bigger. And let's get the, make sure it fits the screen perfectly. We'll go up to uh, 885 or so. All right, uh, that looks all right. So <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll close that menu na uh, for now and come down to uh, the, the double click on the background, come down to the description text, and I don't want um, any description text in there, so I'm just going to backspace that, and then we'll close the, um, close the menu. So the next thing I wanna do is set the, the zero marker to um, 180 degrees and the uh, 10,000 RPM over to the um, 90 degree angle. So again, we'll double click on the background and um, we'll do start and stop values. Uh, so for this gauge, uh, 10,000 is, is a good RPM value. So we won't change that, but I'm going to change the start angle. So I'm gonna um, decrease the start angle down to negative uh, 180. So that gets me where I want to be there. And we'll leave the 10,000 at 90. And we'll go ahead and close that menu. So I don't really like how the numbers are offset here on this gauge. So what I'm going to do is um, we're going to change those offsets. So uh, we'll go into, um, well, we'll start out with minor ticks. I know I want three ticks in between each, um, each major tick. So we'll decrease the size. Uh, to one pixel uh, width, and then <coughs> increase the steps to three. So that'll give us three minor ticks inside of each of the major ticks. Then um, for now, uh, well, we'll go ahead and change the uh, color of those ticks to black. So it'll match the, the major ticks. Close that. And then, um, 
for the labels, uh, let's see, close that out, bring the menu. So where you click um, brings up the menu. Um, so for the labels here, uh, the numbers, I am going to um, change the, uh, the inset on that. So I'm gonna decrease it and you can see it's pushing the numbers to the outside. So we'll go to about, yeah, maybe like right there. That looks pretty good. And uh, we will leave all the other settings here. Um, we can change the size if we like, but 20 is pretty good. And we'll go ahead and uh, close that menu out. So <clears throat> say I wanted to add um, some text over here. I can click on the add text, double click it, drag it down here. I'm going to double click it again, and we'll just start typing what we want. Um, now, I am a fan of the uh, factory gauge face, and it says RPM times 1000. So we'll do that, and then we can X out of that. Uh, I will bring this menu over here, and then we'll scale that up a bit. Uh, I think maybe around 20 looks pretty good. Um, and then the last thing I want to do is change that text color. Uh, we'll change it to black as well. And close that out here. And so that's, um, that'll give us a, you know, a pretty basic gauge. We can actually test sweep this. And then you can see there's a tail behind the sweep. So if we wanted to remove that tail, we can go ahead and go to needle uh, trail. And I will set the color on that to transparent in all three spots. And that will totally eliminate um, the color trail behind it. So like that, close menu. If we do a test sweep again, we have the, the, the numbers changing color. Um, so if we want to uh, change the, if we want to just stay, uh, the numbers to stay black while they're sweeping, say, um, we can come back into the major ticks and then uh, the active color here, uh, the active color setting, we can just change that to black. And now we test that out. So the tick marks stay black. So we're gonna do the same thing with the uh, labels. Um, the label active color, we're gonna set that to black as well. So now if we test sweep that, and the last thing we'll need to do is the minor ticks. We will set the uh, minor tick active color to black. Test sweep that. And there you go. So you got uh, no trail color. Um, but one thing that is pretty cool, so we wanted to have a, a 7,000 rev limit on this car. <coughs> um, rev limit. Or a warning or a shift light or something that functions in that manner. So um, something we want something to have it happen at, at 7,000 RPM. Uh, we can go to the warnings tab and set the high warning trigger to 7,000. and um, you can change the width of the, um, of the trail that it'll create. Uh, but we'll go ahead and close that out and test sweep. And when it hits 7,000, it's gonna turn the, uh, turn the gauge color. So um, that can be modified, uh, you know, open-endedly. And that'll get you kind of your basic gauge. Um, and then if you wanted like a digital readout or something, uh, well, I'll go ahead and do this. This is a, this is a pretty cool, um, thing to do. So I can go to the needle settings and there was a bunch of settings in here. Um, I have my needle length set to 93. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten that up and I am going to, well, first of all, let's turn off the, um, in the, uh, size and ring. Let's turn off the needle button, which is the center. Okay. Close menu. Uh, so we'll go back into needle and we can now change the needle um, offset 
and what we want to do is we want to offset it down towards the numbers. So now we just have kind of a needle um, floating and we don't have a button in the middle. And the function stays the same of the needle, so it still rotates about the, uh, the center point. And then if I wanted to add <clears throat> like a readout um, or like a digital uh, RPM gauge or something like that. Um, so I can go and uh, you can do it one, a couple ways. Um, we can just add another text element right in the center. We'll double click that, bring the menu over. <coughs> and so I want this to uh, read the RPM. So these are all the values inside the software um, that you can actually uh, set things to. Um, but for now, I'm gonna go find the RPM flag here. And you gotta scroll a while. It's definitely good to uh, have a good mouse while you're doing this. Um, all right, so there's RPM. Uh, text, for this, you can make it any color you want. I'm going to make the text black. And then let's go, let's increase the size here. And then what I want to do is use the data source for the text. So oh, I messed that up. So we're going to take this, put it right in the center, and then we'll keep increasing the size here. There we go. So now you have like a digital readout of the RPM signal right there in the middle. And then you have the needle uh, that will sweep. Um, unfortunately, I can't, I don't have a, a connection to change the RPM value right now. So it doesn't actually change on the sweep function. Um, but uh, you can also change uh, fonts and everything uh, in here, but I'm gonna keep it, keep it um, what it is for now. We'll close that out and then we'll do a final test sweep and you know in the car when it's when it's running it's obviously going to have a uh, the rpm signal changing right there in the in the digital display um a few other cool things i mean you can do background images and then just do uh you know transparent uh, you know create your create images on the um on the computer on a different computer upload them and then use them as background uh images on the um uh, on the gauges and then set all your tick marks and everything to transparent uh, and so um, you know you'll basically be using the background image um, one example of that is um, let's see the uh, another cool thing about this is that um, you can actually program and have different set screens so um, when I push the uh, the reset stick here, it'll you know move over to a, a completely different view. Um, but this is one example of using kind of a background image as the uh, as the gauge face, and then the needle here, <coughs> similar to uh, what we what we had before. Um, let's see. Let me go plug in a device real quick. Hang on. All right, so that's not, it's not reading right now, but you can have other screens set up um, and have like a digital display readout of a bunch of different uh, parameters in the ECU. It'll all be connected over CAN bus. So, you know, all these will populate live. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, so that's pretty cool. If you wanted to uh, move these things around, you can, you know, set the positions and, and move them around. And let's see, so, uh, you know, it's it's definitely going to be pretty flexible. You're going to be able to do uh, a lot of different things with it. If you want to have different color um, screens set up or different functions for different screens set up, um, you'll be able to do that. Uh, so, you know, um, if I if I go back to the screen I was just on, um, you know, that's what we just created. And then <coughs> if I go, I have another one set up 
Um, this is just kind of a, a yellow tack with um, um, a uh, black speedometer here. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, that's what I have right now, and it's going to be pretty open-ended, and uh, hope you guys enjoy.